This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Tuesday, June 15. In Squiz Kids today, head first for Aussie heroes. Wasabi the winningest dog. Australia's most expensive Kelpie and the man who was swallowed by a whale. That's what's making news, kid style. The Lowdown. It was a big day for heads yesterday, and taking care of them, with news that a high-profile rugby league player and a Master Chef contestant had both made brave decisions to take care of their noggins. If you're a fan of the NRL, you'll know who Boyd Cordner is. He plays for the Sydney Roosters and is something of a New South Wales state of origin legend. Yesterday, Boyd shocked the footy world by announcing he was retiring early from the game. The reason? He suffered a few concussions as a result of head knocks on the field. And for the health of his brain, he's decided to hang up his boots. Contact sports like Rugby League and Rugby Union have come under the spotlight in recent years, with more and more research being done on the impact repeated head knocks can have later in life. And it's a story that's just going to get bigger as science reveals more about the long-term damage repeated concussions might cause. Meanwhile, in MasterChef land, popular contestant Brett Draper dropped out of the TV cooking show, saying that the pressure of the competition was not good for his mental health. In an Instagram post yesterday, Brent said deciding to drop out of the show in the middle of it being recorded some months ago was a decision he made after feeling rising levels of anxiety. And while the idea of going on to win the contest was tempting, more important to him was putting his mental health first. Another brave decision by someone in the public eye choosing to take extra special care of their head and its health. We've only got one head after all. It's important we look after it. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in the United States, where a dog of Chinese origin named after a Japanese condiment has won the Westminster Dog Show. Confused? Then let me put that another way. A Pekingese dog called Wasabi has won the top prize at the biggest dog show in America. Now, what's a Pekingese dog? It's a little fluffy dog that used to be bred especially for the royal family in China. These days, though, they're found all over the world. And what's Wasabi? It's that green stuff you get when you order sushi, which you should absolutely never confuse with avocado. Wasabi the Wonder Dog was awarded Best in Show at the Dog Breeder Competition in the United States at the weekend. Wasabi beat runner-up Bourbon the Whippet by a whisker. A whisker, get it? Other winners included Matthew the French Bulldog, Connor the Old English Sheepdog, Stryker the Samoyed, and Boy the West Highland White Terrier. And if that sounds like a Harry McClary character list to you too, then you're not alone. And of course, I've stuck a link to a photo gallery from the show in today's episode notes. Nah, you can thank me later. Animal Kingdom. On the subject of remarkable animals, try these two stories on for size. A Kelpie called Hoover from Edenhope in Western Victoria has just broken the Australian record for the price paid for a so-called working dog. Hoover yesterday sold at auction for $35,200. That's one expensive dog. They're called working dogs because they live on farms and help farmers herd sheep and cattle and other animals. So why is Hoover worth so much money? Because according to his owner and trainer, he's really kind to the animals he is herding and gets them to do what he wants without freaking them out. Hmm... I wonder if I could borrow him for a week at my house for use on my children. 
And while we're here talking about animal stories, I couldn't possibly let the podcast go by without telling you about the diver in America who was swallowed by a whale at the weekend before being spat back out. The man was diving off the coast of Cape Cod when suddenly he felt a thud and everything went dark. He thought maybe he'd been bitten by a shark, but it turns out a humpback whale had accidentally sucked him into its mouth. Luckily, it didn't like the taste of him and spat him out 20 seconds later. But what a terrifying 20 seconds that would have been. And yes, for the biblically minded among you, now could be a good time to revisit the Jonah and the Whale parable. Sport time! It was a public holiday yesterday for most parts of the country, so a quick recap of the weekend's biggest sporting achievements for those who spent yesterday in a public holiday haze. And first up, it was a big weekend for tennis ace Novak Djokovic, who won the men's singles title at the French Open, and in so doing, put himself in play for what's called a Golden Slam. What's a Golden Slam? It means winning all four major tennis competitions, the Australian, the US, the French Opens and Wimbledon, and then also winning a gold medal at the upcoming Olympics. Wow. Closer to home and the record breaking was being done at the weekend by Queensland swimmer Kaylee McEwen, who broke the world record in women's 100 metre backstroke at the Olympic trials in Adelaide. Swimming a time of 57.45 seconds, Kaylee beat the previous world record held by American Regan Smith by more than one-tenth of a second. And this, friends, is an excellent example of a fraction. Which, if you're not already studying in maths, you soon will be. You're very welcome. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What was the name of the dog who won Best in Show at the Westminster Dog Show? That's right, it was Wasabi. Question number two. What sort of animal accidentally swallowed a diver in the United States? Yeah, it was a whale. Question number three. Which swimming stroke did Aussie swimmer Kaylee McEwen use to break the women's 100 metre record at the weekend? That's right, it was backstroke. Shout outs. It's June 15, Global Wind Day. No, not that sort of wind. Though, if my dog Louie's windy bottom is any guide, it's global wind day every day at our house. I'm talking about wind that whistles through the trees and is increasingly being used as a green and clean energy source. So let's celebrate wind today. No, not that wind. It's also a special day for these squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Marley from Goomaling, Lily from Dubbo, Jaden from Mossman Park, Chase from Glen Innes, Caitlin from Albany Creek, Elise from Guyamere, Ewan from Albury, Rhett from Kalgoorlie, Max from Roseville, Oscar from Hornsby, and Zavi from Mernda. And belated birthday shout-outs today to Sam from Jindalee, India from Glen Innes, Eli and Isaac from Bulimba, Caitlin from Beckham, Grady from Mornington, and Ethan from Chatswood. And today's classroom shout-outs go to Mrs. Searle and Five Blue at All Saints Albany Creek, Year 6 students at Deception Bay State School in Queensland, who are urged to always do their best, to 3OB at Ivanhoe Primary School with Mr. O who celebrated a birthday over the weekend, Mrs. Kime's class from St. John's Anglican College, where Mrs. Kime is celebrating a birthday today. And finally, a special shout out from Isla at Murray Farm Public School to all her schoolmates, her amazing teacher, Ms. Chen, and all her family. How nice. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout out, or if you're after a classroom shout out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. 
Quiz Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun. Free. Fresh.